looks like things are going very well for the people of Philadelphia. And someone left a very important comment underneath this video saying specifically for the government to exist, the people must suffer. The bigger the suffering, the bigger the government. And I think that's been true almost everywhere welcome back beautiful and amazing human beings this is Lukardowski here of wearechange.org and we have a plethora of absolutely crazy news to get into today as we have some surprising hopeful optimistic news some really uh, strange weird stuff to get into as of course some transhumanists plan to live forever while of course they plan on you living in Philadelphia yeah big disparity there be between what's happening between you know the billionaire class and globalists and corporatists and everyone else we're going to be getting into that with a specific focus on the world economic forum and their transhumanist fourth industrial revolution that they are currently building now uh, seeing the videos in, in philadelphia seeing the videos pretty much all over the world uh, of the amount of increased poverty of the amount of, of desperation of the amount of people lining up at, at food banks this the video that you're watching right now is by the way from Milan, Italy, its economic capital where people are going down the blocks, many streets, in the hundreds, hoping to get some bread and milk for themselves and their family members. Now, if you go on YouTube or big tech social media or if you watch the corporate media, a lot of these problems usually aren't highlighted. Usually, our conversation here domestically in the United States is around absurd issues. Just like this latest investigative piece from Vice, which is literally promoting adult diaper wearing. Yes, Vice News is literally putting out investigative, full-on stories promoting adults to wear diapers. This is the same news organization that, by the way, works hand-in-hand -hand with the U.S. State Department and at the same time also gets promoted and has an unfair advantage on YouTube as, of course, it gets played favorite in the algorithm over, of course, independent small media creators. It's also important to note that some of the biggest corporations, banks, and institutions in the world have partnered with Vice, and this is the type of degeneracy that they're literally pushing on everyone, and gee, we wonder why. Rumble, an alternative social media platform that allows users to upload their videos without the fears of political censorship, has just skyrocketed to the top of the app charts over Instagram, over YouTube, after, of course, having some significant significant victories in the culture war allowing voices to be heard not punishing their users for alleged wrong think and of course not doing the bidding of the national security intelligentsia as recently openly admitted by the ceo of meta of, of facebook mark zuckerberg that just told joe rogan in a very eye-opening interview that they banned a highly political story because of the advice that they were getting from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Mark Zuckerberg admitted that this was wrong for them to do, and in many instances, I, I wish Joe would follow up. I wish Joe would have asked more hard-hitting questions here because this absolutely matters especially when it comes to the context of the federal bureau of investigations playing an extremely political role in our society destroying free speech destroying freedom of the press destroying people's ability to find out what actually is happening for the political benefit of a few establishment elites and as we're finding out from the fbi this is not the first time the fbi is getting involved in politics and elections and that they admittedly do this a lot now when you look at the censorship of the Hunter Biden story, we have to understand that this was a coordinated effort by the FBI, the White House, the government, big tech social media companies, the corporate media that literally all colluded, even though the evidence was right in our face, even though anyone at any time could have verified their story independently themselves, that these people decided to destroy this story for the benefit of the current power class that we are living under. This story was censored right before an election, and let's be honest here, it played a key role in the election of the current president of the United States, as we're also finding out, according to the latest poll numbers, that 79% of Americans say that a truthful coverage of the Hunter Biden laptop story would have changed the 2020 election. And I think it's fair to say that if people found out about the very gross, nasty, nefarious insider business dealings between the Biden family and China and Ukraine and other foreign countries and many other private interests, 
that yeah, uh, of course, I think this is more than, than fair to say this would have been very bad for Joe Biden, but because of the FBI, because of Facebook, because of the corporate media, because of people denying you the truth, that story never got out there to anyone and Facebook censored it, Twitter censored it. You couldn't even mention it. You couldn't even talk about it online. And now in the face of all of this, Facebook is deciding, hey, we're actually going to censor you even more, even when you're not wrong. Now, now already, I, I would argue, Many of the things that they fact check, many of the things that, that they go after, one, are, are memes completely out of context that they don't understand, two, usually highly political issues that they want to cover up, and three, there are some rare instances of some Looney Tune crazy aunt sharing some made-up theory that, of course, many people weren't taking seriously anyway. But Facebook has decided to go further now and has announced that they will let fact checkers comment on posts that, quote, may not be verifiably false. Yes, even though you're telling the truth, even though you have evidence, even though you have photos, even though you have videos, even though you're, you're telling the truth, fact checkers could now come into your post and make sure everyone reads their propaganda before hearing whatever you wanted to send out there to the general public. Again, uh, nefarious is one way of describing it. Absolutely draconian and evil is another one. And I think this meme perfectly highlights the, the dystopian nightmare that we are dealing with that is only starting to begin as of course we are on the forefronts of the fourth industrial revolution which I'm going to be talking about in just a little bit but again we have to understand that a lot of this fervor a lot of this anger a lot of this made up absolute nonsense dribble that is never fact checked is still being spewed on big tech social media just like Keith Olbermann that is literally now trying to tell us that the former president of the United States is in effect a real foreign spy Yes, these are the words of Keith Oberman, who, who, who clearly is just making things up. Clearly, there's no facts, there's no evidence, there's no document. Show me, show me something that, that proves he's a foreign spy. Again, ridiculous claims. Why don't these claims get fact-checked? Because they don't question the narrative and agenda. And of course, when, when claims, assertions, stories, news articles, videos, and photos question the official narrative, then they of course get fact-checked. But we have to understand, we're dealing with an absolutely hypocritical system that is purely focused and bent on you believing whatever version of events they want you to believe in in order to confuse you so you don't see the reality of the current absolute craziness that we are dealing with in our modern day society. By the way, the, the FBI just confirmed that Ashley Biden's diary is legitimate, that Joe Biden did have inappropriate actions with her. And where's the new scandal? Where, where, where's the headlines? When you're looking for, for sensationalistic eye-catching headlines, this is one of them, but but it's, it's nowhere to be seen on the mainline corporate media. Again, long history here, and this is why independent media is more important than ever, as of course, we are working tirelessly almost every single day to try to uncover what's really happening, and of course, against the massive amount of crap and phoniness all out there in our society. You could break through the matrix, actually. You could actually call out a lot of the phoniness, a lot of the bull crap, a lot of the fakeness in our society, just by also wearing a shirt and support this independent media broadcast at the same time. As of course, the best political shirts.com just released a plethora of eye opening, surprising, incredible conversation starting merchandise that you could exclusively get here on our platform. I am very proud of our latest IRS t shirt and our latest FBI t shirt, which you could only exclusively get on the best political shirts.com. Now, I, I like the one that I'm wearing right now. This usually, I find a lot of like-minded individuals who usually give me a thumbs up, a high five, or, or I start to actually have a conversation with after they read this t-shirt that says, if you trust the government, you don't know history. But uh, I, I think this, this FBI rendering, stomping at the heart of Lady Liberty and this ever so humble IRS agent rolling over to you to collect your tax on that $601 Venmo transaction, definitely do take the cake. I'm very proud of these shirts and I really enjoy them. I think you will too. And I think wearing them in the general public is going to be important in order to get the messaging out there, in order to start the conversations, in order to show the general public out there that we we are not sheeple. People are waking up. People are a lot smarter. People are a lot more intelligent, a lot more gifted, a lot more special than, of course, 
all these central top-down controllers and tyrants want us to believe we are. And I think us starting to believe that, I think us starting to represent that, us starting to exemplify that in everyday life just by simply wearing a t-shirt like this one, like the great resist is absolutely crucial and one way that we could start taking back the commons and doing our best to do our part. Again, the best political shirts.com is the website. And what I described to you is almost the exact opposite thinking by, of course, the Davos World Economic Forum that literally talks about how there's too many people in this world, how there's going to be a bunch of useless people in this world, and how we need to pacify them with either drugs or video games. Or in some later conversations, the World Economic Forum even talked about reducing the Earth's population, which I think is a core concept and idea shared by many globalists, by many technocrats, by many individuals who, of course, want to live forever. And the larger question is, how will they be able to live forever? There's there's nothing that has been capable of allowing humans to have this godlike power and authority, which brings up a lot of complex moral questions that I think people should be asking themselves. This, as the latest news coming in today, is that Jared Kushner, the man who openly brags about giving Saudi Arabia a good weapons deal, the man who openly lobbies for the bombing of sovereign countries, the man that is known as being the most establishment shill of them all inside of the Trump administration, has come out and announced that he's trying to keep his body in shape because one day he might become immortal. Yes, you heard that correctly. We're hearing from Jared Kushner that he is prioritizing exercise in his life after leaving the White House because he could live forever. And what he's talking about is, is not out of the realm of any kind of possibility. It's not just science fiction, but it's the actual reality that also has been discussed by, of course, the World Economic Forum and their technological revolution, which coincides with, of course, the fourth industrial revolution, their population control beliefs, virtual reality, living in pods, and, quote, creating a sustainable society where the ruling elites get to live like gods and everyone else is forced to minimize their activities, their abilities, their freedoms to literally not having any privacy, not owning anything, and allegedly being more happier than ever. Well, maybe if you're on the drugs that Yuval Harari wants you to take. And we have to understand, the story that we shared in the beginning of this broadcast plays a role in this because when we look at the online digital space, the environment that has been created is the environment that, of course, they're going to be replicating. An environment that is heavily censored, an environment that is tightly controlled by some nefarious forces out there that are using it for their own benefit, that are breaking rules, that are violating laws, that are destroying human rights, that are destroying the civil liberties, all in the name of using and abusing our online platform for their own personal benefit. Just recently, we learned that the White House was the one that was responsible for the banning of former New York Times journalist Alex Berenson. Just recently, we found out that it's also the Federal Bureau of Investigations that was the agency responsible for the censorship of the Hunter Biden story. And what our current space is building up to be total totalitarian hellscapes, how do you think the fourth industrial revolution will play out as, of course, the individuals in control of our current institutions that are destroying them are the ones calling for their expansion and their more prevalence in your everyday life. Now, you might want to consider that every time you share your data, your information with a lot of these big tech social media companies that are championing the goals of the World Economic Forum, working with them. Another person that was working along the same lines as the World Economic Forum that was connected to a lot of the individuals in that organization that also believed in population control was, of course, Jeffrey Epstein, a horrible, nasty human being that for decades used local law enforcement, congressmen, senators, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the royal family to his own personal benefit to run his international trafficking and extortion operation. Mr. Epstein also had projects that, of course, would seed the earth of his seed of his DNA as the man has conducted numerous secretive nefarious scientific experiments as he was at the helm 
of many prestigious institutions in the United States working on a lot of projects that we still do not know about. But what we, the little that we do know is that he wanted his DNA to be everywhere around the world since he believed he was more superior than everyone else in our existence. He essentially wanted to live forever through his seed and most likely was also working on other life extension technology and some scientific experiments that of course would probably shock the average viewer. Now a lot of people questioned Epstein's scientific involvement as allegedly a, a cover for his extortion and, and, and trafficking operation but I, I don't think it's just as simple as that. I think the money that he put into institutions like Harvard, I think him having an office at Harvard had a lot to do with the resources, the, the research, the laboratories, the, the scientific experiments that were being conducted there that, that, again, Harvard is being very quiet about. I think his association with Bill Gates, who also is a big proponent of population control, had something more sinister associated with it. And when you look at these people, you have to understand, you're looking at people who believe that they're better than you and essentially that your life has no value to them. That's... A, essentially the thinking of many elites who believe in population control, who want to live forever, who know that of course everyone can't live forever, but because they're more special, because they have more money, because they have more power, they can. You can't. This is the train of thinking in these kind of individuals and in related. Not everyone could live news. We're also finding out recently the one time New York Post owner and an associate of Mr. Epstein has just passed away at the age of 77 as the Daily Mail brands him as a quote disgraced financer as of course he served 18 years in prison for a Ponzi scheme which he himself claimed Mr. Epstein was the mastermind of, and it wouldn't surprise me if Epstein was, and, and Hoffenberg actually did the time for him, since of course Jeffrey Epstein had the Federal Bureau of Investigations in his pocket, had the Justice Department in his pocket, and was able to get away with horrendous crimes with just a slap on the wrist for them. This is now, many people are saying that this is just yet another victim of the Clintons. Is that true? Is it not? I don't know. I haven't done the research specifically on this specific instance, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comment section below. Was he Epstein? Was he taken out? Was this a natural cause of, of someone losing their lives? What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Also, if you thought I was wrong in any way, shape or form, let me know why. Uh, down below. I always appreciate the constructive criticism. I always appreciate being able to see a perspective that I wouldn't naturally see myself. I wouldn't be here if it really wasn't you guys sharing these videos, buying the shirts, and, and being a part of this independent media organization. Even watching the videos to the end means a lot. Not only boosts up the algorithm, but, but not a lot of people do that. You doing that. This is why. I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.